Hey fellas, me Trapper here, and welcome to episode one of Foothold School. Now when most people think of trapping and trappers, the foothold is what comes to mind, especially the old long spring, double long spring trap. Uh, I guess this is uh, the quintessential or iconic image of a trap and trapping. And with good reason, the uh, old long spring style trap has been around for over 200 years. And guess what? It still works just fine. Now there are two broad classes of foothold traps. Um, the long spring and the more modern coil spring. And the difference is really simple. The coil spring trap is powered by coiled springs that are placed on the bottom of the frame. Whereas the long spring trap has the older style long springs. So let's take a look at each one, and we'll start with the coil springs first. We'll go over the parts, the features, and the sizes. Now we're going to start with the granddaddy of them all. This is a TS-85 beaver trap, and this is uh, the largest foothold trap that I use, and it is um, one of the largest foothold traps available. It has an 8.5 inch jaw spread, which is, uh, which is huge. Your traps are going to go all the way from um, a number 1 size or a number 0 size, which is about a four inch jaw spread all the way up to something like this. Uh, you'll have a number one which has a single spring, you'll have a number 11 size which is a, a double long spring trap like that. The next size up would be a number two, they have a number three size coil spring, a number four, and finally uh, a number five. When you get up to the number five size traps you're getting into uh, dedicated beaver traps or mountain lion traps, they're really big. But let's stick with coil spring for now. You can see this trap is powered by coiled springs that fit onto the base of the trap. If you flip the trap over, you'll see this is called the base plate here. And one of the first things you need to pay attention to is how is the chap, trap swiveled. This is side swiveled, meaning the swivel, uh, the trap chain is attached to the side. A lot of people prefer a center swivel trap. Uh, especially predator trappers, and that means the swivel in the chain would be uh, attached to the center of the trap, not to the side. The next thing you'll notice is this is a two-coiled trap. You can see there's one coil spring and the second coil spring. Then your pins protrude out over here. It's possible to four-coil this trap, and that means you would take two more springs and you would slide them on right in here. The more coils that you have on your trap, the faster the trap is going to fire and the more powerful the hold it's going to have. So why would you want a two-coiled trap when you can have a four-coiled trap? Well, it depends on where you're trapping and what you're trapping. Since I'm trapping beavers and my footholds are used in water, um, a beaver doesn't fight very hard like, say, a coyote or a wolf or a mountain lion. So a two-coiled trap is going to be just fine. Uh, the beaver is blundering around when he steps on the pan. It's not like he's going to uh, try and jump out of the trap before it fires or notice something's wrong. He's just going to step on it hard and get caught. If you're predator trapping, a lot of people like four coils, especially guys that are up north if because their traps are buried in the ground and that's going to freeze over. The ground's going to get frozen, icy, crusty, and it takes a lot of power to come up out of that ground, out of that frozen ground, and still hold the animal securely. So. Uh, for my purposes, I don't have any four-coil traps, and I don't need any four-coil traps. They're too much. It's, it's overkill for me. But a lot of guys, they have nothing but four-coil traps. So, like everything else, it depends on what you're catching and where you're catching it as to what you need. This, of course, is the pan. That's what the animal steps on to fire the trap. Now, this particular trap does not have a separate dog. Uh, that comes over and latches under the pan. This is known as a dogless trap and you're seeing more and more of these uh, that are dogless and what this means is the pan and the dog are all one piece and this little protrusion right there is what's going to fit over the jaw of the trap and hold it down. That's the, that's the protrusion that I was talking about and that just fits over, over the jaw. So what happens is is when the animal steps on the pan the pan's going to rotate down. This is going to come this direction, releasing the jaws. These are known as the levers of the trap. And as you can see, that coil spring 
has one bar that's going across under the base and the other bar is coming under the lever and this is going to that coil spring right there is what's going to rotate that lever up firing the trap this is known as the loose jaw you can see how that jaw comes up because it's not being held down to safely handle and fire a coil spring trap always have your hand under that loose jaw you see I can fire this safely like this because the jaws are going to come up and not going to catch my hand if I had my hand over here it'd be a different story so always know that you've got your loose jaw a lot of people will flip it up while they're working on it and that's how that works now this is known as your bolt your pan bolt right here and this is what increases or decreases the pan tension pan tension is critical especially for land trappers the more you tighten this bolt the more pressure it takes to move that pan and activate the trap so a lot of guys that are predator trappers trappers um, they're gonna run three four even five pounds of pressure meaning it's gonna take five pounds of force to fire that trap the reason being if they go to all the trouble to make a coyote set they don't want a bird to land on it and fire it they don't want a rabbit to step on it and fire it they want to make sure that a sizable animal is standing on that pan before it goes off um, so with the water trapping it's not quite as critical I usually run about three pounds of pan tension on my traps uh, I'd rather not have a muskrat set my beaver trap off when I'm uh, when I'm going for beaver I want a beaver in it especially if I'm using a big trap like that so anyway now when it comes to fastening your traps I like to use a good heavy chain when you're buying expensive traps don't skimp on chain buy good quality chain this is it right here is number two American made chain um, high quality chain I use a heavy duty uh, split ring to attach it and you can see this is the chain that comes with the trap itself and you can see I've got a swivel there I've got another swivel there and then I've got my quick clip so that I can easily take that on and off like that and since I'm long chaining these beavers I've got about five feet of number two American chain another swivel on it and then an earth anchor with a clip so I can clip this off to a tree I can drive this into the mud or the dirt um, I can if I want to short chain him I can simply drive a t-bar stake through this first split ring here um, so with this setup I can anchor this trap any number of ways so I throw this in um, in the boat and I'm ready to go so that's uh, an overview of a coil spring trap uh, one other thing we need to talk about is the jaws now these are regular jaws notice how those jaws close completely many of your predator and land trappers have switched over to offset and laminated jaws now an offset jaw are jaws that are going to have a gap right through here they don't close completely that's extremely important when you're doing um, land trapping because most of the anti-trapping pictures that you see on the internet um, that are horror stories they're taken years and years and years ago when people were trapping with traps like this on land this trap cuts the blood circulation to an animal's paw off and so when the animal goes to try and free himself from the trap when his paw becomes numb he starts chewing at it and he can't tell if he's chewing here or on his paw and that's where the whole myth of an animal chewing his leg off to get out of a trap comes from He's not chewing his leg off to get out of a trap. He's chewing at what's got him caught, and he can't feel his leg because he didn't have any blood flow. So the use of an offset trap where the jaws are spaced apart, the jaws close more like handcuffs than they do um, this type of trap. And so when you're trapping on land, that's extremely important. That way, if you catch the neighbor's dog, you're not going to have any paw damage. Uh, you can release him. He might be a little sore, but uh, that's about it. The other thing that a lot of land trappers use are laminated traps, and that is they make the jaws thicker. They'll weld um, some additional stock on top of the jaws so that instead of the jaws being this thick, the jaws will be twice as thick. And once again, that's designed to provide comfort for the animal. Um, 
when the force is spread out over a wider area, there's less irritation to the paw, and it's a more humane catch. Now, the reason I don't run any of these is because I'm using these in the water, and most of the time I'm setting these up to drown the animal. Um, so he is, he is not going to be um, released. He's going to be at the bottom of a drowner. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. And a lot of times when you're beaver trapping, it's possible to make a tail catch and an offset trap you would lose that beaver so this is what I like to use for uh, my beaver now this is a long spring trap and you can see instead of having coiled springs it has these elongated springs this is more of um, the iconic or original style trap now this is a number 11 it has a four inch jaw spread and this is a sleepy creek trap and I love sleepy creeks they're made in America they're great, great traps. Now you can see this trap is center swiveled. A lot of long springs are side swiveled and attached, the swivel is attached over here. The Sleep, Sleepy Creek puts the center swivel on them, which is nice. And you can see I've got my first swivel there. I've got my second swivel here. And this is also a drowner lock. And we'll uh, do a separate video on slide wires and drowners. But uh, Sleepy Creek provides one built in. Now I have modified this trap. This is an oversized pan. I like large pans. And this is a flapper pan. There's no pan tension on that whatsoever. This is sort of a special purpose trap for me. But you can see this is the dog. Whereas the coil spring was a dogless trap. It did not have a separate dog. This trap does have a dog. So it has a pan and a dog. And you can see when that pan drops, it's going to release the dog. Now, let's take a look at how to set these long spring traps because they're a little bit different in how they work. For me, the easiest way to set these long springs is to use your knee, and it's called breaking them over the knee. And all you do is depress the springs, and notice how I've got those springs angled down. Then I can simply pull those jaws down, get the dog over the jaw, and set it. Now you can see that's not exactly laying level, but if you'll rotate those long springs in the direction of the dog, then that's going to bed level. Once again, you have your loose jaw or your free jaw, and that's where you would want to handle everything, just like that. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. I really, really like these old long spring traps. Uh, the only reason I use the TS-85 so much is because it's the biggest trap I can find for beaver. If they made a long spring trap that had an eight and five, eight and a half inch jaw spread, I'd use that any day of the week. But if you'll notice, these springs really are not that stout. You can see I'm just using a couple of fingers to depress them. They're, they're not that powerful. The reason that this trap is so tenacious is not because the springs are strong and powerful. It's because you can see once these springs pop up, the jaws are held together by this ring. The only way that those jaws can open up and come apart is if this ring breaks. There could be very little upwards pressure exerted by these springs. In other words, these springs can be really old and really weak but this trap is going to hold tenaciously because, like I say, for, these, for the hold to fail, this has got to break. And um, I've never seen one do that. Another advantage that long springs have is that if you're in frozen ground, if you set this trap in, in a bed, the bottom jaw and the whole bottom of the trap can freeze to the ground but the top spring can still spring up and spring apart. Now let's compare that with your coil spring traps. If I put this trap in the ground and all of this freezes, that's going to inhibit this spring. Okay? So um, that's an important point to consider. The pros and cons between a long spring and a coil spring. That's sort of the old um, nine millimeter versus 45 or Ford versus Chevy argument. A lot of people love coil springs. A lot of people love long springs. It's not really a question of which is better. It's more a question of where you're at and what you're doing. 
if you're in rocky ground, um, ground that's frozen a lot of times, when you go to try and dig a trap bed in rocky or frozen ground, you're going to end up dealing, digging a lot smaller circle or a lot smaller trap bed for a coil spring than you are a long spring because a long spring has got these big long springs on it so you've got to dig a much bigger area so if you're in rocky or frozen ground people love these coil springs it saves them a lot of digging um, and a lot of work when I'm in a beaver swamp down here in Alabama most of the time I'm in the muck and when I take a small coil spring trap it can actually just sink straight down in the muck these long springs help stabilize that trap and help float it. Um, to me, even in dirt, I like to use a long spring. Um, if I'm doing any predator trapping or land trapping, I like a number two Sleepy Creek long spring. Down here, the dirt is not going to freeze nearly as much as it is up north, and I'm not in a really rocky area, despite the fact that I'm on this riverbank right here. Um, so for me, digging is not that big of a deal and I like the way these long springs bed themselves. Um, so anyway, that's the basic rundown between a coil spring trap and a long spring trap and why some people like a coil spring and some people like a long spring.